Hey everyone and welcome to another video. So today I'm just going to go through some of my thoughts in terms of what's happened up until this point with regards to my LG soundbar setup. Some of you might have seen the video that I posted regarding the sub potentially being popped. Um, I've been having quite a few issues with the soundbar so just rewinding things back a bit. Originally I actually had the LG SL10 YG so that was their 2019 flagship model and sometime, I think it was late uh, 2020, um, I actually got the opportunity to upgrade it. So I upgraded it, uh, in fact it might have been last year, so it would have been 2021. So I actually upgraded it to the SN11RG. So this is a 7.1.4 setup, comes with the soundbar, it comes with two rear speakers and the sub. The sub is exactly the same between pretty much most of those 2019 and 2020 model soundbars, um, but it only works with the one that it's paired to. A few issues that I was having with regards to that, that soundbar, um, one of them that I didn't actually realize at the time that was the soundbar that was causing it, but was occasionally when I turn the TV or the projector as it is now, when I turn them on, uh, initially there'd be no, no audio. Um, so none of your UI elements would produce any sound. If you tried to play something back, it just wouldn't play because it wasn't able to play the audio as well as the video. Now, I originally thought that that was down to the projector because I'd obviously upgraded the projector at the time. But as it turns out, once I'd taken the soundbar out of the setup, um, that problem didn't occur. So that was the first issue. That was kind of an intermittent thing. It, originally, it was only happening maybe four times out of 10. And by the time towards the end of when I've actually sent the soundbar off for repair, um, it was happening probably nine times out of 10. So it was quite quite a big annoyance that was actually happening. Um, it was to the point where I actually got used to having to fully power down the, the soundbar after I've turned everything else on, and I'd have to do that every single time. The big issue, the one that I actually sent the soundbar off for repair for, was the fact that the subwoofer was making a popping sound. Uh, a clipping sound, um, it would produce bass, so it was still playing, but no matter what audio you played, it was, it was, it sounded popped. And you, you'll be able to see that from the other video that I actually posted. I've contacted LG, initially I, it was email response, um, sort of email communication, and eventually when I didn't get a reply back from them, they just kind of stopped replying to my emails when I provided them with all the information. So they wanted uh, serial numbers, they wanted receipts. I provided all of that and then they just went quiet. No responses to any of my emails. Um, so I actually rang them and when I rang over the phone, described the issues, um, obviously they verified that they've already had all the information that they required. Uh, the lady I spoke to, she booked in uh, the whole unit for repair. Now I was hesitant to send everything and this was what I actually happened way way earlier when initially I was about to send it off and then I kind of backed out because I didn't want to risk sending everything via a courier. Um, as it turns out that is their process so in order to fix it they want everything so not your cables, not your remotes, but the soundbar, the two rear speakers, and the subwoofer all has to get sent regardless of what the issue is. So even if it was just an issue with one of the rear speakers, they'd still get you to send the whole unit in for repair. So I agreed to it. They um, asked me to just have everything ready on the day for when the couriers come. I wasn't home because I was on a afternoon shift and they came at at that time. So my wife was home. Uh, I'd laid everything else out. I've got a video already, the previous video, where I actually show that everything was in pristine condition. It's something that I take uh, quite a lot of care over with regards to my tech, and especially anything that's on show. I make sure that it doesn't have any cosmetic damage because I do end up reselling a lot of my tech. And if you're buying tech, especially sound, sound bars, speakers, things like that, you want them to look good. You don't want them to have scratches or dents all over them. When they've come and collected it, what they've done is they brought a box. So they brought their own packaging. And what from what my wife's told me and from what I can gather from all the CCTV footage, they've essentially just put everything inside a box that's lined with polystyrene. They've taken it out onto the driveway. Um, at that point, they've rather than wrapping everything individually, they've just wrapped up the box and put it in the back of the van. Okay, so Monday the 15th was when, uh, Monday the 15th of August, 
2022 was when they've actually collected the soundbar and taken it. That's the courier. Um, I got a text message on Friday at 2.45 p.m. Uh, the follow that same Friday, so it would have been Friday the 19th of August 2022, saying that the repair team had received the soundbar. Uh, by the Monday, I then got a message from the repair team saying it's already been sent off. So because it came in around about 10 in the morning, I think I actually rang them back, I rang the customer care team back that same day and basically they didn't have any information. They didn't have any information in terms of what's been done, uh, whether the issues have been resolved, anything like that. She can't, the, the, the lady that answered the phone, she just can't help me. Um, she said, basically just wait for it to come and we'll take it from there. So it got delivered back to me on Wednesday the 24th, so yesterday, and 24th of August, 2022, and so when I've unboxed it, initially I wasn't that concerned because it looked like everything was individually wrapped. Um, so I just assumed that that's what they'd done inside when they've actually taken everything. Um, however, once I've obviously started unwrapping it, I've realized that just about every part of this setup is now damaged. Um, needless to say, I was very, very angry. Um, I've rang LG, uh, updated them on the situation and the person I've spoken to on yesterday, uh, 24th of August, 2022, um, escalated it to his team leader. So that brings us to today, 25th of August, 2022. I've got a call back from the team leader and initially he's tried to get me to actually send the whole unit in for repair again. Now, in between yesterday and today, obviously I've connected all the system up because I've been without it for this long and I wanted to see if they've even resolved the issue or not. As it turns out, the issue is actually still there. And what I'll do is I'll insert a clip showing that no matter which frequency you run the subwoofer at, it's still making a popping or clipping sound. We'll go down to about 65. So as you can see, it's still doing it at that frequency, down to 60. It's noticeable uh, during tests, obviously quite quite a lot, but even during content. So we were just watching a TV show yesterday in the evening, and even during that, I could I could hear the clipping, and it is very very distracting. However, worse still, the rear left speaker is also making a tapping sound now. Initially, I thought it was actually my daughter playing in the other room, um, but when she actually came in the room and it was still making that tapping sound, I realised it wasn't actually coming from the other room. It was actually coming from behind me. Uh, my door is obviously on that side, hence why I actually assumed that the, the sound was just coming from there. When I've gone and put my ear to the speaker, I could actually hear a tapping sound. Now, I killed the power to both rear speakers, turned it back on. That issue doesn't seem to have come back, but that's something that's never actually happened before. And that rear left speaker is the one that's damaged the most. So that's got a big dent in the actual sort of metal grill and various sort of gouges uh, in, in the actual grill on it on itself. Um, the shape of the grill has also become deformed, so it's now protruding top and bottom of the speaker, whereas it's meant to be flush. Um, so basically that, that speaker is potentially damaged as well. The rear right does have a tiny little nick in it as well, which once again wasn't there when I've sent anything off, sent everything off. And the soundbar itself has got scratches all over it. It does also have a little ding, just around that section there. Um, it's not massively noticeable, but once again, the damage wasn't there before and it is now. So when I've spoken to this team leader and he suggested doing a repair again, because that's their process to just endlessly send things in for repair and get more and more damage, um, I've refused. So I've, I've basically said, no, I'm, I want a replacement. Uh, the response I got was pretty much um, we don't think he'll go through, but if that's what you want, then uh, I can escalate it to some phantom division um, that will look into it. Non-customer facing, of course, so obviously I can't uh, put my feelings or 
my experience across to them. Uh, they have asked for photos to be emailed across, which I've already done. They initially, the team leader did say that he was going to send me that email tomorrow because for some reason his admin team don't work past 5 p.m. I don't know why it requires an admin team to send out a simple email asking for photos, but there you go. Um, he did, or somebody already has sent out that email and I've already responded to it. Uh, the photos came to around 74 meg, so I've sent it via mail drop. So hopefully they can actually view these in full quality. However, I did mention it several times to him that the videos are actually better evidence because they clearly show when you actually look at things and whenever you've got grills, sometimes it is quite difficult uh, depending on how the light sits to capture that in photos. Whereas in video, it's very, very obvious that you have damage there. And anybody that's seen the videos that are posted, will agree that, that that damage is very, very obvious. And in person, it's probably more so. From what I've watched back, it's probably more so visible to the, to the naked eye than it is to a camera lens, which obviously will work with dynamic ranges. So where we're at at the moment is, today is 25th of August, 2022. Once again, saying the date. Um, I'm smiling, but I'm not happy. Uh, this repair, Whole, the whole process has been a shambles from start up until this point. Firstly, the fact that the emails just stopped getting responded to. Then the fact that I had to send everything in for repair when it was one single sub that was actually defective. Um, as it turns out, they might have actually caused a bigger issue with the soundbar and the, the rear speaker. And they've basically ruined the cosmetic uh, sort of appearance of an entire setup. Um, as I mentioned, I, I, I want resale value. So I, I normally look after my tech and it's not acceptable for a company to take things in for repair, damage them. Um, I was given two options by the team leader. So one was I can sort of escalate this and hope for the best. And um, however, the words you used, I believe were un it's unlikely um, for this to go through because what they wanted me to do was to actually resend everything for a second time. And they were proposing that they would just change the casings on everything. Now, if that rear speaker is now popped or damaged, taking out one casing that looks damaged and putting it into a casing that's not damaged doesn't fix the issue. If the, the subwoofer's popped, once again, taking it out of one case and putting it into another doesn't solve the issue. And the state of the soundbar, I won't be surprised if that is also damaged, so once again, taking the components out and putting them into another casing doesn't solve my issue. So I was not having that. And even though they're still probably trying to suggest that, that's not something that I think any customer should have to go through. So the original booking for the courier was actually done on the 12th of August. So the, the initial contact must have been the week before that. So we, we've gone probably maybe 15 to 20 days already into a repair process for a product and they've not fixed the pro the issue that it went with, but they've inflicted damage on every product that I've sent to them. Um, this whole process, the customer service side of things from LG seems pretty, pretty bad to me up until this point. Now, I'm still hoping that they can rectify this. I'm hoping that once they see the photos, that they agree that, yeah, this is unacceptable and that they issue the replacement. One thing on the replacement that the team leader mentioned was, and the reason why he tried to push me towards a repair rather than a replacement, was that it takes 28 days to ship a replacement because my initial order was from Amazon, whereas they need to dig a replacement unit or an equivalent replacement unit out of their stock. Um, he wanted me to basically do a repair where they just change the casings and then give me a gesture of goodwill, which I don't want. I don't want to get 50 to maybe 60 pound of them. Initially, I'm sure they'd go low ball. They'd offer me 20 pounds or something like that. Um, nothing like that is gonna replace the fact that I had a pristine setup and it's now damaged. And I'll know that it's damaged regardless of whether it's in a new casing or not. So that side of things, I, I'm just not happy about. Every other company that I've sort of had this level of issues with, so if I think through the, the sort of different companies, LifeX, I've had issues with their bulbs in the past. As soon as you ring them, they issue a replacement. Eufy, I've had issues with some of their cameras and other equipment in the past. Once again, as soon as you give them the details they need, they, need, they issue your replacement. 
um, Amazon, even directly dealing with Amazon. Whenever you have an issue with Amazon, they just issue a replacement or give you a full refund. Even Apple, um, Apple's customer service has got a lot worse over the years, but even still, whenever I've had an issue with any of my Apple products, which is rare, but whenever I have, they take it and they genu generally, if they can't uh, repair whatever it was, because generally whenever I've sent in anything to do with Apple, it's been hardware related. And whenever it's hardware related with them, they just replace the item. So that's four different sort of companies that I've had dealings with that I can think of off, off the top of my head, where I've had some sort of an issue and every single time they've simply replaced the product. Um, those items weren't even damaged in the way that this, this is. And they, with those, I didn't have to wait around for a repair process. Now I understand companies aren't just gonna send out replacements left, right and center. That's fine. I followed their repair process and it's proven that it doesn't work. They damaged the items that they sent back without actually fixing the issue. Now, the team leader actually said something, I'm paraphrasing, but he said something similar to that. And I asked him to basically say that back to himself and then think about what he's asking of me to accept another repair. He has escalated it. So I'm hoping that somebody higher up um, who has a little bit more influence or has the authority to actually deal with this situation um, actually takes responsibility and just issues the replacement. But obviously the reason I'm making this video is because I am going to keep you guys updated in what happens. Um, I, I have seen videos like this in the past from other YouTubers and sometimes it, it just looks like a whine, um, complaining, um, almost feeling like you're something big or important and this isn't anything to do with that. This is simply holding companies to account and giving you guys an idea before you invest in products of a certain company what it's like to actually deal with them. Now, as I mentioned, Eufy is one of the companies that I've had a lot of products from, and I've also had a lot of products fail because I buy, because I have so many products from them. A lot of them I purchased with my own money, and some of them I'm getting as review units now because of a collaboration I have with them. But either way, anytime I have an issue, I not only tell you guys about it, but then I also tell you about what the repair process or the replacement process has been as well. And general, generally, it's simply a case of they just send you a replacement and then you put your faulty one in that packaging and send it back to them. And that's fair enough. Like if they want to investigate what's gone wrong with this setup, they can have it back. I don't, I don't want the, the remains of this. I'm going to send this back to them. But to expect me to have sent it for repair, to have got it back damaged and the in initial fault not rectified and then expect me to then go through that again I don't think that's reasonable and they thought that would be faster than simply requesting a replacement item. The other part that's kind of got me disappointed is the fact that there's so many levels and so many hoops that you have to jump through. As I've mentioned, all of those other four companies, you only have to speak to one person. So your first point of contact, they deal with the issue. So they either do it internally or they themselves have the, uh, the sort of authority to issue a replacement. With this, this is now gonna be the, what, fourth person. So initially there was the email contact, then there was the phone call, then there was the follow-up phone call yesterday where I've reported the issues and the follow-up phone call that I actually had back from the team leader. So a team leader has called me back, but he doesn't have the authority to actually issue a replacement, even though he can clearly see that they've caused damage to an item that wasn't damaged and not fix the, the item that was actually sent in for repair. That, that many levels before you get to an answer usually is bad. Usually that causes problems. I see it in my, my sort of daily work, uh, my job essentially, we have the same issues. You have so many levels of hierarchy that in order to get anything rectified, it takes forever. And generally when you have that kind of hierarchy, it's bad for the end consumer. In this case, it's me. It could potentially be you guys out there if you have products from this company as well. So yeah, this, this was just my sort of little rant as well as update video because I was hoping that I wouldn't need to make these intermediary videos. I was hoping that after my last video, it would literally be a case of I upload what the outcome was. But the fact that I'm now having to jump through extra hoops 
um, provide more information. Um, I offered them to send the, the actual 4K video because that way there can be no doubt. I've got video of before and I've got video of, of after. So there is no doubt in that, but they didn't want that. They just wanted still photos. So as I say, I've provided that. Um, we will see where we go from here. Um, I will keep you guys updated. So if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any up and coming videos. And I'll see you in the next one.